When Clara was attacked by a dream crab who slowly fed on her brain, she had a dream where she became an old woman filled with regrets. She turned down many marriage proposals, taught in every school in Europe and learned how to fly an aeroplane. She was then attacked by a dream crab, and in the dream within the dream was a young woman who saw Santa Claus's sleigh crash on her roof. The doctor arrived and invited Clara into the TARDIS, and they arrived at a base on the North Pole on Christmas Eve. The doctor, Clara and the scientists at the polar base were again attacked by dream crabs and had a dream within this dream where Santa saved everybody's life. Clara told the doctor that Danny was, in fact, dead, while the doctor explained that he lied about finding Gallifrey. While trying to fetch a dream crab specimen for the doctor to examine, Clara realized the specimen had come to life and attacked her face, causing her to have a dream within this dream. In the dream, Clara had woken up on Christmas morning to an alive Danny, and the doctor had used a dream crab to enter this dream. Clara assured the Danny in the dream that she would miss him for five minutes every day while for the rest of the time she would get the hell on with it. After leaving Danny, the doctor realized that the dream crab had left no wound on either of them and everyone at the polar base still had the pain in a spot on the head, which meant that they were still dreaming. The doctor, Clara and the scientists woke up, but before they left, Clara asked the doctor how Santa could have been on her roof if he was a part of the dream. Ashley Carter signaled Santa with a flare to get them away from the dream constructs that were psychic representations of the dream crab's attack, and as they rode on Santa's sleigh, the Basie scientists, who weren't actually scientists, woke up in the real world. Inside Clara's dream as an old woman, the doctor pulled the dream crab off her face while she failed to wake up, and he realized that he had arrived 62 years after he had last met her. As Clara told the doctor about her life and the doctor wished he could have come back for her earlier, Santa arrived, asking the doctor, how much do you wish that? The doctor woke up again, and pulled the dream crab off of Clara's face again at her home, revealing a young Clara. The doctor offered Clara to travel through time and space in the TARDIS again, and she agreed. To celebrate Clara's birthday, the doctor threw her an infinite clarabration, attended by herself as a child and an old woman along with Oswin and Clara Oswin Oswald. When Clara was shocked at the violation of the first law of time, the doctor revealed that the guests were, respectively, a ganger, an ood in a wig, a zygon and the tesselecta, sending them all out and explaining that he'd already paid for the infinite clarabration banner. When the doctor took Clara to Cinema Paradoxo for a silent film, he had her smuggle all his snacks under her coat, only for the two to discover that it was a movie acted out by silence, leaving Clara unable to recall the film. The doctor later took Clara to an auction where they purchased the living portrait of Lady Josephine, who was destined to become the eighth doctor's companion Josie Day. Depositing her in the doctor's cottage, the two later returned to check up on the two, Clara teasing the twelfth doctor about his sentimentality. When the doctor took her to San Diego Comic-Con, a selfie that Clara took of herself and the doctor allowed them to discover and thwart a plot by the Lady of Neverness. The doctor and Clara traveled to a galactic auction in Earth's orbit where unclaimed storage was being bid on. One of the storage pods belonged to the reclusive collector hyphen T hyphen. When the pod was opened, a mother Wrigglin hyper kraken emerged and began killing everyone. Her eggs were jolted after being transported with the station's dimensional shunt and began to hatch. Clara helped distract the hyper kraken along with the station's auctioneer as the doctor safely transported the hyper kraken, her eggs and the storage pods to a backwater world. The doctor and Clara went on a tour of Snowcap University in Antarctica in 2048. While taking a helicopter ride, they learned that one of the students, Polly Evans, had stayed behind at the end of term to join the classified project Sub-Zero. When another student, Quinn Norton, who also a part of Project Sub-Zero, was killed in a helicopter crash the doctor and Clara narrowly avoided being on along with Polly's father George, they returned to Snowcap U to investigate. Clara met a research graduate called Winnie Clarence, short for, Oswin Clarence. Winnie looked exactly like Clara and recalled dreams of living a thousand lives in a thousand places. Winnie overheard a discussion between the doctor and Clara over whether or not this meant she was one of her splinters who was born to die based on a decision Clara made and ran off on a snowmobile. Clara tried following after Winnie but the two fell down a crevasse into an ice cavern where the missing students had been experimented on engineered by Dr. Patricia Oddly to survive an extreme cold. Along with the spy Paul South, Winnie released most of the imprisoned humans from captivity. 
the doctor transmitted a signal with his sonic, causing Dr. Adla's animals to go wild. After feigning betrayal of the two, Winnie threw the doctor the key to free the hybrid subjects from their cells and saved the doctor's life by pulling Dr. Oddly into a vat of liquid ice after Oddly pulled a gun on him. Dr. Oddly was killed, and Winnie appeared to have sacrificed herself, once again, for the doctor. When Winnie's mother arrived on the scene, Clara, struck with guilt over the death of Winnie, made the decision to live out her life as Winnie to spare Winnie's mother the pain of losing her daughter. Fortunately, Clara did not have to do this as Winnie survived when she unwittingly had a syringe of Dr. Adla's experimental blue blood serum injected into her, allowing her to live inside the ice. Clara realized that this meant that not all of the splinters died saving the doctor, and many of them had lives of their own. The doctor said that Clara was able to release some of her inner demons as a result of this knowledge. The doctor and Clara visited Paris in 1944 just after it was liberated from the Germans. After foiling a plot by the Darapak Empire, the doctor and Clara joined in on the liberation celebrations. Clara joined the doctor in a mission to help Mr. Hitch recover the sentient superweapon the Haddix Ura. The Haddix Ura shot down the landing craft the team were inside, revealing the weapon's location on the planet unnamed BX-4, but the team were able to escape using jetpacks. While piloting a jetpack, Clara got separated from the team when she was attacked by pterosaurs, causing her to fall into the jungle. Clara met the jungle's organic avatar, who took the form of Danny in an attempt to get Clara to trust him. Although this didn't work, the doctor found Clara and the organic avatar, and the avatar told them that the Haddix Ura had been devouring the jungle and turning its indigenous life into an army, and asked them either to destroy the weapon or to take it elsewhere. The doctor realized that this meant it intended to end the war between the Hub Alliance and the Axis worlds and the Haddix Ura began augmenting the crew to become its foot soldiers. Believing it had augmented Clara as well, the Haddix Ura had actually linked the jungle's computer systems to its own after augmenting the Avatar. The Avatar appeared to shut down the Haddix Ura and its augmented soldiers, but in fact, the Haddix Ura had tricked Hitch's team to bring it on board the lander as a means of escape for the Haddix Ura. With Clara surrounded by the converted Gela and Wiremu and about to be killed by them, the Avatar saved her life by destroying them with the entire jungle's wildlife. When the doctor returned, Clara kissed goodbye to the Danny Avatar, who told her he would always be in her memories. The doctor and Clara encountered a vampire-like race called the Corvids in Highgate Cemetery in 1972, who had petrified the TARDIS. They tried consuming Clara's psychic essence but found her toxic due to her unique connection to the time-space vortex where she splintered into a million Claras. The doctor discovered that the Corvids exposing themselves to Clara left a psychic corridor open, and using the psychic signature of the dead amplified by the ley line the cemetery was built on, the doctor banished the Corvids back to the time vortex. The doctor and Clara arrived in a forest on a planet, where the TARDIS was stolen by dragons. Navigating to a nearby village, they learned from the Lord Mortigan that they were on a planet designed to resemble medieval times with the dragons being the planet's natural inhabitants, which had been genetically modified. The dragons had been freed from being inhibited by inhibitor chips by a person known as the Dragon Lord, who aimed to wipe out the townspeople, having already killed the royalty. Although the doctor declared his intent to leave and let the townspeople get what they deserved for enslaving the dragons, Clara reminded him that he shouldn't decide which lives were worth saving. The doctor, Clara and the town's remaining lords set off to reason with the Dragon Lord. Along the way, they ran into a baby hatchling, but Lord Mortigan killed it, causing its parents to attack the party. The doctor was separated from Clara in the chaos, and reuniting with Clara at the Red Castle, they found that the Dragon Lord had been killed, believing they would have been grateful to him for liberating them. The doctor and Clara retrieved the TARDIS from the dragon's treasure hoard and left, calling rescue ships to evacuate the planet of humans to allow the dragons to live in peace. The Doctor and Clara were summoned by Harry Houdini and found themselves in a computer program inside a crystal ball which fed on their despair. The program set up theatrical death traps with no way out so their minds could be ripened for it, but the Doctor, Clara and Houdini escaped. The Doctor revealed the virtual environment with his sonic screwdriver. The Doctor, Clara and Houdini then fought back by imagining what made them feel the most free, which shattered the prison and returned them to the real world. They found the owner of the crystal ball prison, Diamanda, 
had been completely consumed by the crystal ball's power and killed. When Houdini regretted his inability to commune with the dead, the doctor and Clara reassured him that his legacy would be remembered forever. Wanting to raise funds for an IT suite at Cole Hill School in memory of Danny, Clara came up with the idea of a Halloween fair. However, few people had actually turned up. As part of the fair's witch hunt, the time traveler Miss Chief, intending to create mischief, brought the witch finder General Matthew Hopkins to find Clara. When he did so, Miss Chief sent them back in time to the 17th century, where Hopkins captured Clara, in costume as the witch, throwing her into the water to see if she floated. Miss Chief saved Clara from drowning, and Clara later found a mob was accusing a woman called Agnes Leach of being a witch. Trying to save Agnes' life and prove her innocence, Clara was captured by Hopkins again. Clara and Agnes were framed as witches, imprisoned and left to starve and be deprived of sleep in solitary confinement until they confessed. A hallucination of Danny convinced Clara to confess to being a witch and escape, rather than remain in the dungeon. Clara accidentally identified the doctor, who had come to rescue Clara, as a witch, and both were to be executed. Miss Chief brought them back to the 21st century before they could be hanged. The doctor and Clara convinced Miss Chief to bring them back to retrieve the TARDIS and save Agnes from the dungeons, and unwittingly brought the missing cat Smudge with them. Clara convinced the mob that Hopkins was a witch and Smudge was his familiar, but the doctor prevented them from murdering Hopkins by sneakily putting Miss Chief's time-traveling Marat in his belt, forcing Miss Chief to save his life. The doctor and Clara escaped and returned to Cole Hill. Because of the doctor and Miss Chief bringing extinct animals and rare artifacts to the 21st century as part of Miss Chief's scavenger hunt game and her making superstitions coming true, the publicity from paranormal, wildlife and antique experts made Clara's fundraiser at the Halloween fair a success, and a few months later, Clara opened the Danny Pink IT suite, which the doctor was also present at. In the summer of 2015, the doctor and Clara returned to Earth to find it conquered by the Hyperians. When Clara had befriended a fireman named Sam, he led them to the remainder of London's population where they found Kate Stewart waiting for them. Joined by Sam, the doctor and Clara tried to destroy the Sussex firewall only to wind up letting the transformed Colonel Weir into the TARDIS. Armed with Weir's knowledge, the trio flew to the sun only to be confronted by a Hyperion who revealed how their race had survived. After escaping back to Earth, the Doctor and Clara led a resistance movement before shifting the fusion web around the sun to the year 5 billion, collapsing it as the star went nova. At some point, Clara and the Doctor met novelist Jane Austen, and later told Riggsy, I love her, before teasing him with the statement, take that how you like, 